Here on Matazone HD Sportsnet, presented by the JMU Alumni Association, I'm joined by men's head soccer coach Tom Martin. Coach, these last two games, one milestone for you and one tie against a nationally ranked team. That was a good uh, five or six days for us, no, 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 no doubt about it. Well, we'll start off first with the win against UNCG on Friday night. Coach, first off, congratulations, 350 wins at JMU. What's that say about your team? Uh, your tenure at JMU? It says I've been here a long time. <laughs> it says I've had a lot of good players and, and, and good help with good assistance. I mean, uh, I'm one that's all about stability. And, and it's been, I've been very fortunate. It's been good for me. But the, the Greensboro game was, uh, Greensboro is always a good team. We lost to them last year 1 0 here on a deflected goal in a game that was nip and tuck and could have gone either way. Uh, one of the hardest things at Division One soccer and soccer specifically, is winning on the road. It's very, very difficult. Uh, and, and, and I wish I could explain why. I, I don't have a formula to, to, to solve that one. But we, we played very well. We, we, we had a, a very good scouting report. We had a, a good week preparation and, and scored a nice goal uh, in, in bad weather, good field, good crowd, really nice for us. And it made the trip a whole lot shorter coming, coming back. And one of the things is you don't you don't want to peak in a sport like soccer too early in the season if there's any way you can control it. You want to build. You 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 want to be on the upslope. You want to you want to try and ascend. If all your injuries and chemistry and good fortune is in line, you, you want to get better as you go through. And it's always a goal for us all the time to do that. And I saw that happen in the Greensboro game. You know, it was probably. One of the more complete efforts preseason, in season that we put together. We had decent starts and decent finishes to each half, which are always real momentum swingers if you don't have control of the game in those phases. And I, I saw this team start to come together, and, and a lot of it carried over to the Penn State game. Yeah, you said coming together last night against number 16 Penn State, coming away with a 1 1 draw in basically everything a fan can ask for from a college soccer game. Yeah, watching that game, uh, <laughs> as a spectator, it had it all. Mm -hmm. It had controversy, it had questionable calls, it had nice goals, it had nice almost goals. Uh, a couple red cards. A couple balls off the woodwork. Yeah, it was, it, it was good. And, and all credit to Penn State. You know, it, it's, we were up a man for a lengthy period of time, and then at the end up two men when they, when they got a second yellow. And, even in the overtimes, we, we were banging at the door, and we hit the post, and we hit the crossbar, and we just couldn't find a, a, a way to put it in. Uh, the first half was a game that was more Penn State. Their passing possession, we were chasing the game quite a bit. We, we made a couple little shape changes, but I think more than anything else, it was more a, a, a realization change where the guys figured out, look, we can play with these guys if we put it all together, but it, it has to be all about we. And, and we had a great start to the second half. The first eight, ten minutes, we were unlucky not to score. Uh, the red card that they got was well-deserved. Josh would have scored. I mean, it was pretty much an open goal, and the kid did what he had to do to stop it. But we just couldn't find a way to put it in. You know, it was one of those stretches where I have no complaints in how we played. We, we changed formations tactically a little bit and, and personnel a little bit and put some new kids in, in unusual situations, and they handled them very, very well. And uh, a game where we deserve more than a draw. Now, conversely, going into that game, I think 19 out of 20 people would have said, if you get a draw, you've got to be happy, even if it's an ugly draw. That wasn't an ugly draw. That was a good draw. We played well, and, and we answered a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Well, we talked about him last week on the show, uh, Francisco Narbonne. This mm -hmm. week he's going to miss the Belmont game and probably the Lipscomb game. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to go play for the Panama national team down in Houston, Texas. Uh, your thoughts on, one, him getting the honor to go play, and two, getting the chance to do this? Well, first of all, we, we, we can't even think about missing him because this is an opportunity that he gets and we don't want to stand in the way. One of the highest honors in sports that you can have is to, to represent your country. And we're in his corner 100%. He deserves the opportunity regardless of how much he plays or doesn't play. The good thing is that the tournament he's in is being played in Texas in the States. So he's, he, he has to get a little bit less traveling. We may get him back a little bit earlier, but he'll definitely be out for the weekend. Uh, his team plays Nicaragua uh, Wednesday, and if they win, then they'll be in the finals on Sunday. So it'll be a long weekend for him. 
And when you factor in, we had an overtime game last night. I mean, he's going to be one one sore little defensive midfield player. But at the same time, uh, it's just a phenomenal opportunity. You know, there, there's so many times that uh, kids miss games because of maybe an injury or a discipline problem or you just aren't on form and you, you, you change your, your team shape and anything. We'll be happy to try to work that stuff out to support Tito's opportunity to play where he is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Tremendous honor for him. This weekend, JMU does go to Belmont. And they also play Lipscomb. Your thoughts on what's going to happen this weekend and what you're looking to get out of it? Well, it's a long trip. Uh, you know, we, we, we owe Belmont a trip. Uh, they've got a new coach who, who came from a combination of West Virginia and Drexel, good coach. We know the whole coaching staff there very well. They're good guys. They're good coaches. It's going to be a real difficult test for us because it's a long trip, and, and there's pretty much no easy way to get to Nashville. So we'll leave on Thursday afternoon and get there in the middle of the night sometime. The good thing is we'll be there for three days and, and get to play two solid teams. Uh, we'll have to make some adjustments, personnel-wise. Uh, but, but what I like about this group, the last two games in a row, we've asked three different kids who all have freshman eligibility or off-the-boat freshmen, if you will, to step in and play starting roles. And against Greensboro, two of them played 90 minutes, and against Penn State, one of them played 110 minutes. So we're, we're, we're gradually improving, but we're gradually building a deeper squad, which is really, really good, because down the road, you're going to have some adversity. You're going to have injuries. You're going to have kids not on form. You're going to have kids maybe on a card suspension. You know, last night was kind of a card field fest with, with Penn State. I, mean, I think we had four, and they had maybe five. Uh, correct me like if that. I'm wrong. Something like something that. Something like that. I lost count. <laughs> but the, there might maybe a silver lining. All, all our cards were to different guys, if there is such a thing as a silver lining in that. So we do have a number of kids on one card. Mm -hmm. We've had other years where we're, we're four or five games into the season where we've had guys on two or three cards. And then you have to be very cautious because once you reach that penalty level of five cards, you've got to sit. doesn't matter who it's against. So if there's a silver lining to the aggressiveness uh, that was shown in last night's game where we got some cards, we spread it around, mm -hmm. which, which hopefully will, will come back to help us and, and keep continuity in terms of our depth. But the fact that younger guys got to step up, and that, that's a coaching thing that I think that every coach preaches. Look, if something goes wrong and somebody goes down or somebody's not playing, it's all about the next man up. You know, you've got to be ready. You've you got to be fit. You've got to be focused to take advantage of your opportunity. The times we've been done, we've been faced with doing that, and we've done it early in this season, kids have responded very, very well. Bodes well moving forward. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> it, it, gives us, it gives us as coaches the decisions – they're hard decisions, but they're good decisions that you have to make. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not where you look around and, uh, do I have anybody that can play that role? Now you may look around and, okay, there's three kids that have a little experience there. Let's give this kid a shot. He's on form. He's had a good week. And, and, and that's what you really like. You, you want it to be competitive. And it also makes for a, a, a better bus ride and a better locker room, you know, when you have a deep squad and nothing's really taken for granted all the time. You, you, you should be... I know we're not a professional level, but sometimes you want to adopt a professional attitude. Look, if you're not getting it done, you should be looking over your shoulder. There's somebody else pushing you. If you don't have players in, in, in team sports pushing you, sometimes it's difficult to push yourself, and, and that's a good thing to have. Mm -hmm. Well, as we said this weekend, JMU takes on Belmont and Lipscomb over in Nashville. Coach, best of luck, and thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. My pleasure.